I'm reminded of Proverbs 24, verse 17. It says, if we delight in our enemy's downfall, it angers God, and mm. he will turn his anger from them and back at us. Mm. For we, his children, should know better. Wow. And I love that scripture because it's like that in reverse. Hmm. Like if you congratulate them when it's their turn, then trust and believe it will come back around to us when it's our time. And if you demonize someone for having what you actually want, then when it is your opportunity to get that thing, you're actually blocking that blessing because you've created a paradigm in your mind to where it is evil to have that. Ooh. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am in Amanda's humble abode. I just love using her space for content. It's it's the best. Uh, <laughs> and I am here with Amanda and we are going to talk about jealousy. I am so excited for this video just because I know jealousy is so prevalent, especially among women. And I want to be able to deal with that. And I, I even came across a video this week uh, from another creator. Her name is Brittany. I'll put her video down below. And I just loved her take on it. So shout out to you, Brittany, if you ever see this. And um, I just want you to know that you partially inspired this video. So let's get into it. I want to start this video off by first sharing a story. Just so that you guys know that I'm not coming from a holier than thou perspective. I'm actually coming from a perspective of I actually once struggled with this. So I remember one time I was in grade, I think it was either grade two or three. I cannot remember, but I know it was one of those grades. And there was this girl, she was a black girl. I thought she was so pretty. I thought she was so fashionable. I just loved how she looked. And we had to do this art project in class. And her art project was so good by the time it was done. Hers looked amazing, okay? Like Picasso <laughs> did it, okay? And I know we were only in grade two, but that was my perspective. Yeah. And mine was so bad. Hmm. It was so bad. Like, I'm not an art. Even today, I'm still not an artist. That's not how God made me. But in grade two, I had such a limited perspective, mm -hmm. and I ended up being so jealous mm -hmm. of her art project. And the teacher came around and was like going around to everybody's table and started affirming her art project mm -hmm. and was like talking about how good it was. And it just made me feel so jealous. Mm -hmm. And I remember I walked over to her art project. I took a brown crayon and I drew a big X over her project and I got in so much trouble. Mm -hmm. But it all started off with me feeling jealous, me feeling like she was prettier than me, me feeling like she had better art than me. And I didn't know how to deal with that in grade two and or grade three, whatever grade it was. And it ended up leading to me tearing her work down. Hmm. And so many times that's exactly what happens. It's it doesn't just end at jealousy. It starts with jealousy. Yeah. And if it's not dealt with, it ends to tearing somebody else down yeah. because you feel like that's the only way to make you feel better mm -hmm. is to tear them down. I have another story, but I'll share that maybe later on in the video. But I wanted to ask you, Amanda, is there has there been a time when you experienced jealousy mm -hmm. and what was your experience with that? Yeah. So my experiences with jealousy, I have tended to feel more like righteous in my jealousy and that feeling like if somebody else got something and I felt like they didn't deserve it, I'm jealous. I feel some type of way. I feel angry towards them. Um, so an example of this is, you know, throughout high school, middle school, high school, college, I, I played flute and I was used to always being the best. I was used to always getting first chairs and, and everything. And regional competitions were kind of like a no brainer, like at district competitions, regional competitions, and yeah, for those, I'm definitely going to get first chair area. I might get second or first state. I might get, you know, fifth through first. And mm -hmm. so that's what I always expected um, based on my skill level. And I felt justified in that. And I remember going to a tryout and another girl not doing better than me from my own opinion and perspective. I really felt like I blew everybody out the water uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> but 
And I honestly did. If I'm being honest, I I, I did better. Um, and, I, and other people had said, oh, yeah, I thought you were going to get first chair. And I just remember being so angry and so jealous because she didn't deserve it. Mm. She wasn't a better player than me. And she didn't perform better than me. And she got to play the solos and everything, even though I'm used to being the one who plays the solos. And I'm like, I would definitely play that solo better than you. Like, you're just playing notes and rhythms, okay? (laughs) That doesn't have no dynamics, no musicality. (laughs) Like, we got to put on a performance and I'm bored, okay? Like, (laughs) give a little pizzazz. And I just felt so jealous. Um, So that's like one that I dealt with. Um, And another one, Another one that I dealt with was um, there were two girls in high school who felt like they always pulled the boys. And I wasn't super cute. Don't get me wrong. But I also felt like they weren't super cute. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm not saying. All I'm saying is (laughs) it felt like we were all kind of in similar levels. You know, I may have even thought I was a little bit cuter, even though I didn't think I was one of the prettiest. I never did. I never thought that I was. Um, But I was so jealous that these two girls were constantly pulling the boys Mm. because I'm like, there are a bunch of other very pretty girls, prettier than me, prettier than y'all who are deserving you're not deserving Mm. of all of this attention. I remember the boys just like fawning over them, fainting over them. And I felt like it's so unfair. Like, what do you have that everybody else doesn't have? Um, And I definitely wanted attention for myself, but I would say I also felt like if somebody else had that attention who I felt was prettier, I wouldn't feel that kind of way. Because there are plenty Mm. of other pretty girls who like, pulled all the boys and I didn't care because I felt like, oh yeah, that makes sense. They deserve it. Um, And so that's kind of like the view I had of that. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just not good. And so I, you know, there's a difference between envy and jealousy, right? Like envy is not liking someone or, you know, even wanting to tear them down because they have what you want. Mm -hmm. And then jealousy is not liking someone or feeling hatred towards someone or wanting to tear tear someone down because they have what you believe they don't deserve Mm -hmm. or they've taken your rightful place. Um, That's why the scripture says that God is a jealous God uh, because he alone deserves that spot in our heart. He he alone deserves all the glory. None of us have the right to be jealous about anything because we deserve nothing. And so Throughout my life, I can't say that I've struggled with envy a ton. I mean, I'm sure I have at some point, but I, I can't even recall. But jealousy, when I feel like somebody else has something that I feel like they don't deserve, they haven't worked for it or whatever it may be, like that, you know, had in the past had really gotten to me. Yeah. And I really love your example because it's different than mine in the sense that I felt jealous because they had something that I wanted. Like in that instance I shared earlier in the video, I was jealous because her art was better than mine and I wanted to be better in that area. Mm -hmm. And yours is, no, I'm jealous because you are taking something you do not deserve or you have something you do not deserve. Mm -hmm. And I love that because it's, we all experience it or have experienced it in the past in different ways. Mm -hmm. But I love that we're speaking to those two separate examples because I know Mm -hmm. that maybe some of you watching, you've experienced it, maybe not in my way, but in Amanda's way, Mm -hmm. but it's all still wrong. And can I also add a little bit because I felt very undeserving. Like growing up, I didn't come from much. Mm. I wasn't a pretty girl growing up. So it's not like I had a lot of resources. I didn't have a lot in me that was really special other than like the flute thing. Um, And so I struggled a lot with unworthiness and feelings of not deserving good things in Mm. life. And so when I saw someone else who I would assume is undeserving in the way that I'm undeserving, but getting things that I couldn't have Mm. that really hit me um, because it, it, it created cognitive dissonance. It, it revealed, Oh wow. Like, and, and I'm actually recognizing this in real time right now. Like, 
oh, wow, I had, I was blocking so much internally because of a limited mentality that I had Mm. about what I believed I deserved. So when somebody else believed that they deserved more and got more, I, it couldn't compute to me um, because they didn't struggle with feelings of unworthiness. Um, And so what I'm recognizing now is that there are spiritual forces within me that were like so triggered that they were free from feelings of unworthiness while I was bound by feelings of unworthiness. Wow. I just realized that in real time. Like that's crazy to think about. That is so powerful. Yeah, it's crazy. That is so crazy. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to share another example too that I had um, where I was in grade seven at the time. And there was this girl who was sitting next to me and she would always get super high marks. And I wasn't like a super straight A student at all, but she was incredibly smart. And she always got like 99s, 95s, 98s. Like she just did so well. But she was the kind of girl that when she would get her mark back, she'd be like, oh, I should have done better. And I remember being so annoyed by her <laughs> because I'm like, girl, I got a 70, you know? There's I, always that one kid. I know. Why like, you gotta be that way? Girl, come on, just keep it to yourself, you know? And I remember being so jealous of her and I bullied her. Like I actually ended up getting suspended from school over this. Wait, how did you bully her? Like um, virtually. <laughs> Really? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Was this in high school? Or? This was in grade seven. Oh, grade seven. Girl, I didn't have access to a computer then. <laughs> <laughs> I literally got yeah. suspended. I think it was mm. like a half day in school suspension mm. over this. And mm. even to this day, me and her are cool. I've since apologized. I'm not that person anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's in both cases, I was so filled with jealousy that I had to release it in this negative way. And it was always trying to tear this other person down, Mm. you know, and I just think jealousy, envy, all of it is so dangerous because I came across. I think I was telling you this earlier on TikTok. I've seen the discourse around, oh, jealousy is not a bad feeling. We've all experienced it. If you experience it, just make sure that you use that as motivation to be better, to grow. And it's like almost like this, it's encouraged to be this thing that motivates you. Mm -hmm. And I think that is incredibly harmful because you should not be using this thing as a step up. Yeah. This is something that you need to kill. Absolutely. You need to kill that part of you or not kill that part of you, but kill the flesh. Yeah. Kill that part of you. Okay, yes, have kill no that place. part of you. Have no place it in It needs me. to have no place in your yeah. heart. And if that's something that you struggle with, like if you're scrolling on social media, you see someone has a house you want, the car you want, the type of husband you want, whatever the situation is. you don't think they deserve. Or something you don't think they deserve. You really need to take that back to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it originally starts with comparison. Mm-hmm. Comparing yourself to this person in some way. And then it leads to jealousy and then it leads to even more harm. Mm -hmm. And I was reading this morning in scripture about Cain and Abel and Cain and Abel both brought their sacrifices to God, but God accepted Abel's sacrifice and didn't accept Cain's. And Cain was so mad and jealous over that, that he ended up murdering his brother. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of cases, we see that jealousy does not lead to fruit. Mm-hmm. So you cannot use this thing in a way to benefit you. Yeah, it actually leads to death. It leads to it, death. Like, it's not neutral. Yeah. It's not net neutral. It's like, oh, no, it doesn't yield to fruit. So, you know, it's not fruitful. It shouldn't have a place in your life. It's like, no, it actually leads to death. Yes. Like, a a jealous person is a murderous person. They are oh. murderous in their heart. If they can't kill you, they'll try and kill your reputation. Yeah. Um, they'll try to assassinate your character. Maybe they'll try to break down your self-esteem. Whatever it is, a jealous heart is a murderous heart. Yes. And so do you want to have any kind of murder inside of you? Absolutely not. Kill it. Yeah. Before it kills somebody else. Yes. And I think sometimes we're like, oh, you know, I want to kill something before it kills me. Like, I want to get rid of shame. I want to get rid of unworthiness. I want to... Okay, cool. Yeah, you have some self-sabotaging spirit. Like, that's pretty bad. You want to get rid of that for sure. Yet, you don't want to deal with the things that has the potential to kill somebody else. Oh, You want to 
you want to work on the things that will stop sabotaging you, but yeah. you don't want to work on not sabotaging somebody else. Like you are dangerous. Yes. If you operate in jealousy. That's what I'm saying. This is so good. And I love how blunt you are being about it because it's, it's just, actually it that is. serious. It is that serious. It's that serious. And I love that we're raising awareness on how serious it is. Because if we coddle this thing, then we're basically saying it's okay to have this in your life. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you know, it's like a little pet. As Tiffany Montgomery would say, your pet demons. <laughs> but yeah. it's not something to be coddled. It's something to be killed. Mm. So, okay, I have a question for you. Okay. How would you practically tell someone, if someone comes to you and they're mm-hmm. like, Amanda, I'm dealing with jealousy mm-hmm. against this person. How do I deal with it? What are some practical steps I can do to deal with this? Mm. At first, I would just like ask God to show you the gravity of the situation. Mm. Because oftentimes when we are the toxic person who has the opportunity to hurt someone else, we make passes and amends for it. But when someone else is being toxic towards us, we think that they're the most evil, vile person in the world. Mm. And so ask God to see things appropriately. So good. We extend so much grace towards ourselves and hold other people to such a high standard when it's done to us. Yeah. But we have to start seeing ourselves in the shoes of the person in the receiving end. Yeah. And how just dangerous that can be and how much that can hurt. And so that's the first thing I would say, like, ask God to allow you to see it accurately and appropriately. And then the next thing I would say is beg God to prune it out of you. Yeah. Like, and he's good. I believe that the Lord is going to give you strategy around it. You can't tolerate it or want to tolerate it. Right. Like you can't think, okay, God, thank you for showing me. No, like. I hate this thing. I don't want this thing. God, take it from me. Take it from me. Take it from me. Like literally beg him to take it from you because it makes you a dangerous person. So I would at least start there. What would you say? So good. That's all so good. And I agree with you completely. I would also say challenge yourself to bless those that your flesh wants to curse. Mm -hmm. You know, because... If in your flesh you come across somebody and you're feeling jealous, pray for them. Mm -hmm. Every single time I've even had a slight wonder in my heart. I don't struggle with this. And I'd be lying. I don't struggle with this now in my adult life. But anytime I've had a slight wonder of, oh, that's nice. Like, oh, that would be nice for me. You know, that'd be nice for me to have. I always pray for that person. Always. I'm always like, Lord, bless them with more because it challenges my flesh. If I'm praying in the spirit for God to bless them with more of the thing that I'm desiring, then it does something. It kills my flesh and it takes that active work to actively pray more for that person as opposed to like just oh, I'm just going to ignore them. I'm just going to mute them. I'm just going to block them. It's like, okay, sometimes you do need to do that. But I think challenge yourself to pray for them. I, it's very difficult to be jealous of somebody you're praying for. Mm-hmm. That's what I would say. Yeah, totally. And I think it's also important for those of you who have struggled with the type of jealousy I described of like feeling like somebody else is not deserving of what they have. They didn't earn it. They didn't work for it. They're not intrinsically good enough to have what they have. I would also remind yourself of how gracious the Lord has been towards you Mm -hmm. because many times, especially when we've been saved for such a long time, we start to overestimate our work in our own salvation and our work in even the good things that we have in our lives. Like we start to think, you know, I have built this life. I've worked for this. I deserve this. So good. And you know what? Many times hard work earns the good things in your life. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to negate that reality. There is a reality and God is the one who brings the harvest. Yeah. You bring the hustle, but he brings the harvest. And so you got to be thankful that you're not one of the people, like if you do have success in your life, you got to be thankful that you're not one of the people who 
toiled and toiled and toiled with no harvest. Yeah. Right. Like thank God for the harvest that you do have and be even grateful that you didn't deserve his salvation of all of the sin and wrongdoing that you've done. And even the jealousy in your heart, God is still gracious towards you. He has still kept you like he is such a gracious God. Um, And so remembering how much we've been graced and how much we need it helps us to get out of, out of a posture of feeling like we're deserving yes, and someone else isn't. That's so. so good. I'll also say this, that at the end of the day, you don't know that person's story mm-hmm. too. Sometimes in a lot of cases where we are feeling jealous of somebody, you don't know all the history. Yeah. You don't know where God's brought them from. You don't know what their life has been like. Mm -hmm. You don't know what they've prayed for. You don't know those intimate details. So while you may be feeling, oh, this person isn't deserving just by these external things that I've measured, God could be weighing so much more, Mm -hmm. you know? And and it's like what you said, at the end of the day, none of us are deserving. But God in his goodness, we have to trust that, In his wisdom, he knows who to give what to Mm -hmm. and why he's giving that person a thing when we just only know a very small fraction of it. Yeah, totally. Okay, so I kind of want to flip this because we've talked about the times where we've been the, the, the bad person, right? Yeah. Like what has it been being on the receiving end of jealousy for you? That's so good. It sucks. It doesn't feel good. It, a lot of times, I think even recently I had this experience, it made me sad, you know, because I'm like, dang, I really wish that you wouldn't have, because in my case, it's usually ended up to like slander or competition and like, it just has me feeling icky. And I'm like, man, that really sucks because it's hurtful. Mm Mm-hmm. That's what I would say. Like, it's just, it's never felt good on the receiving end Mm -hmm. uh, because it's always led to this negative action against me. Yeah. What's a time in which you have been on the receiving end? Like, what has someone done? Because I want people to understand, like, what it even is like being on the receiving end. Because I think that there are some people out there, I'm one of those people. I didn't grow up with much. I always struggled with unworth unworthiness and feelings of I don't deserve XYZ. And so the notion of someone being jealous of me never crossed my mind because I always felt like there's nothing to be jealous of. Like I ain't got nothing you would possibly want. Um and that traveled with me well into my adulthood to where people had to shake me up and be like, Amanda, they're jealous of you. And I'm like, that never even crossed my mind. I didn't grow up with a mom saying like, oh, they're just jealous of you, honey. Like that was the last thing on my mind. And so I want for those of of the women who are watching, who it's hard for them to even envision. They may be getting on the receiving end. They don't even recognize that's because they're jealous. What does that look like? Or how have you experienced that? In my case, it's a lot of it has been slander. Like when I was younger, I remember there was this girl that felt some type of way and she basically started like spreading these things about me. And it was really hurtful because I'm like, dang, girl, like I'm on your side. Like I actually like you, you know, and I ended up like having to separate myself from her because she was talking bad about me Mm -hmm. and it really sucked. And I think sometimes you can hurt relationships with people that actually are meant to help you. Mm -hmm. You don't know what our relationship could have been. Like it even makes me think about our relationship. When you and I met, I didn't have a platform. You had the platform. But if I was jealous of your platform, God would have uprooted me out of your life. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have reaped so many blessings from you teaching me what you know. Mm -hmm. And so many times like you're just jealous of the person that's meant to bless you Mm -hmm. instead of just seeing them the way God sees them and partnering with them. God uses people to bless you. Mm -hmm. You know, the enemy, you say this all the time, the enemy will send somebody to cause issues in your life, but God will send somebody to bless you. Mm -hmm. And I think it just really sucked on the receiving end because it's like, dang, like I actually liked you, Mm -hmm. you know, but you're over there slandering me Mm -hmm. because you're jealous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I've, I've certainly experienced that a lot. Um, and it does generally look like 
gossip and slander. Yeah. Like that's one of the main ways, especially when it comes to women. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think men do it too, but I just think that they deal with it in a completely different way. Women, it's still that murderous spirit. Yes. They're trying to assassinate your reputation. Yeah. If they can't stop you, they're going to try and turn everyone against you and yeah. try to get everybody to have a wrong perception of you. But yeah, that's happened many times in my life where it's like one person or a couple of people will just hate me and like talk about me and turn a bunch of people against me. This has happened many times in my life. Um, And it took me a while to recognize that it was jealousy. There have been a few people who have admitted to me that they've been jealous Um, And that helps to open my eyes. And then also just like people around me being eyes for me and being like, that's because of jealousy. Um, And now I actually accept it as this is a possibility. This is a reality. And it is foolish of me to continue to think the way that I used to think. Yeah. And I just thank God for the women who are Christian who have approached me and told me that they're jealous mm. because that has helped me so much to recognize that it is a reality. Yeah. I mean, there's one girl who came up to me and said, you know, I had to just confess to you that I had been jealous of you for years because of a position that I wanted that you had. Um, and, you know, there have been other people who have admitted that to me. There was one girl on social media who reached out to me. I didn't know who she was. And she said, you know, I, I want to confess to you and repent to you. I just thought you were so beautiful and I was jealous. Um, and I used your picture on dating apps in wow. order to get men. And I've, I've been using it for a while and I wanted to let you know, you know, I think she didn't want me to get in trouble. She didn't want it to like mess with my marriage or anything or misrepresent me. And she like confessed to me. It's so demonic. It is demonic, but I was also very grateful that she confessed it to me. I think it's valuable that she did because otherwise that could have like really ruined my marriage. Like somebody else, like there's a picture of me online, you know, and it's like, oh, Amanda's on dating sites. It's like, no, this is somebody else catfishing. And I think even to this day, I get people who are making accounts of me. I mean, there's an account of me on TikTok. People tell me all the time, you know, they're like asking for money for prophetic words and everything. There's nothing I can do. I've already reported it many times, but sometimes jealousy and envy looks like imitation. Yeah. They'll try to imitate you or become you. And so if they can't destroy you, they'll try to be you. Yeah. And that's another very dangerous thing because it will start out with like copying different things, imitating Um, different things, try and take your secret sauce or whatever it may be. But then at some point, once they've copied so much or done so much or imitated so much, like there's only so much that they can do before you have to be out of the picture for them to replace your life. So that's where it becomes murderous. Yeah. Right. And so like, I think that's just something to be so, so, so incredibly mindful of um, and recognize when it is dangerous because sometimes you may have people who are close to you yeah. and you're recognizing these things and you don't think that they're dangerous. Uh, they don't look dangerous in seed form, but when they're fully grown, it only ends with there can only be one of us. Yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, it sucks on the receiving end. It's like, wow, like many people have talked crap about me, like many, 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 many. <laughs> and it hurts. It hurts really bad. It does hurt. It sucks. Yeah. Um, you know, like many people have not liked me without ever even getting to know me, you know? And I'm like, how many of those are because of what somebody else has said? Yeah. You know, but it just is what it is. I mean, like what, what God has for me is for me, but it's like that, that really sucks being on the receiving end. Like it's yeah. very destructive. I'm sure there are women watching that have been on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. And I even want to speak to the women that are elevating in different areas of their life, you know, and you might be elevating, maybe you're getting married, you know, maybe you're having a baby or maybe, you know, God is blessing you in some other way, growing your platform or whatever it is, you're, you're graduating. And sometimes when you are receiving blessings from the Lord, there will be people that are jealous of that. And the truth is, I want you to just be so focused on the work that God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not focused on that and you're caught up in the slander and the jealousy and the gossip and all of that stuff, 
it will deter you. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of Nehemiah Mm -hmm. building the wall. Mm -hmm. And basically there is these men that were trying to stop him from building the wall. They were Mm -hmm. sending false reports. They were trying to like, I think even try to kill him at one point. But it was all because they wanted to stop the work of God. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, this is what it's about. It's about stopping the work of God in your life. Mm -hmm. So you just need to be so focused on what God is calling you to do that you don't even pay attention to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Guard your heart, guard your your mind, guard Mm -hmm. your eyes um, and your ears so that you are just so focused and like Amanda says has an eagle's mentality Mm -hmm. you know that like when you're flying so high you're not concerned about what people are doing beneath you Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day it's it is it sounds bad but it's like the devil's work it Mm -hmm. is that's what it is it's the devil's work so Mm -hmm. don't be concerned with the devil's work Mm -hmm. just be so concerned about and be concerned about your father's business yes yeah yeah and for those of you who or much like me, you're like, there's no way anybody could be jealous of me. I would just say, please don't be so naive. Yeah. And don't be so gullible. Yeah. Please don't. Please don't. Because that is dangerous too. And it's not to focus on those things, but it's to be able to recognize those things so that you can actually protect yourself. Yeah. Because like I said, a jealous spirit is a murderous spirit. And you don't want to think that you have friends that aren't friends um and it's good for you to be able to recognize who a safe person is and who's not yeah um i think a lot of times if you feel like you have less going for you you may think well what could somebody be jealous of or even if people are further along than you you may think oh what can somebody be jealous of but you have no No idea idea what you have that somebody else craves maybe you grew up in a very safe household yeah and they had a really toxic upbringing they could be jealous that you had safety yeah right like um maybe you're very different and they feel like they're basic and so they may have everything that you think that they may want but like they feel basic and so they 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 are envious or jealous of the fact that you're different yeah you never know what someone is is jealous of or why they're jealous of it or what their trigger is what they're triggered by you know um and we pray for those people you know like I want healing for those people I pray healing for those people you know like I had to heal feelings of unworthiness and undeservingness in order for me to not struggle with jealousy yeah you know um like once I was free from that it's just like I I can't remember the last time I struggled with jealousy same I can't remember so like that came from a place of healing so we pray healing for those people if you currently struggle with with jealousy or envy, like my prayer for you is, is healing, right? Like for God to heal those places of inadequacy or, or heal those places in which you feel like you need to be the best or whatever it may be. Like, like there is healing for you. And if you're on the receiving end and you think nobody could ever be jealous of you, please, please be mindful and learn how to navigate yourself in a way that is wise so that you can continue to go further because the crabs in a barrel mentality is a real thing. Yeah. Like people wouldn't talk about crabs in a barrel if it weren't a real thing. Like, and, and for those of you who are not familiar with it, like it's, it's a saying that comes from, if you put all a bunch of crabs in a bucket, like if one tries to crawl out, you don't even have to worry about it getting out because the other ones pull it down. Mm -hmm. You never have to worry about it getting out. Like they'll keep themselves down. Right. Like, and that's even kind of like the mentality behind slavery. Yeah. Like in, 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 in oppression, um, it's like, Hey, if we can, if we can beat slaves down so bad that if one tries to get out, if one tries to advance, if one tries to escape, no worries, they'll, they'll, their own people will handle it. Mm -hmm. Right. And we have to get out of a mentality of bondage. That's a mentality of bondage that like, if I can't get out, nobody else can. Yeah. And, but the thing is, if you actually would let someone excel many times, everybody gets out. Everybody gets to their freedom. When we have this mentality of scarcity, as opposed to abundance, not only does it hinder somebody else, but it also hinders you from yeah. the growth that could be on your life. Yeah. Yes. I'm so glad you said scarcity. Well, first, I'm really glad that you talked about 
people not being naive about it Mm -hmm. because the enemy knows the calling of God on your life Mm -hmm. and he's going to send people to try to distract that or abort that or sabotage it. So I'm so glad you touched on that. And I also love that you ended up going back to the fact that it's birthed from a place of scarcity because when you're abundant, you actually believe that there's more than enough to go around. Mm -hmm. But when you believe that there's not enough resources to go around that's when you become jealous of others and what they're being given and what they have. Mm -hmm. Also, when you're jealous of people, sometimes it's because you aren't trusting the timing of God. Mm -hmm. Because if you trusted the timing of God, then you would believe, hey, I haven't received what I've prayed for yet, but let me congratulate this person Mm -hmm. as I wait for my blessing. Because clearly it's not my time yet. And my father in heaven knows when my time will be. Absolutely. Literally, Ecclesiastes 9-11 says time and chance comes to them all. Mm-hmm. Your opportunity will come. Mm-hmm. But how are you stewarding the time in between that? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times God won't bless you. I'm reminded of Proverbs 24 verse 17. It says, if we delight in our enemy's downfall, it angers God mm-hmm. and he will turn his anger from them and back at us. Mm-hmm. For we, his children, should know better. Wow. And I love that scripture because it's like that in reverse. Hmm. Like if you congratulate them when it's their turn, then trust and believe it will come back around to us when it's our time. Yeah. You know, and that's the kind of God that we serve. Whereas if they're not doing well and you're celebrating, you're slandering, he will bring it back around to you. Right. So it's just like you just want to make sure that you always have the right heart, heart posture mm-hmm. so that you can receive when it's your time to receive. Absolutely. And if you demonize someone for having what you actually want, then when it is your opportunity to get that thing, you're actually blocking that blessing because you've created a paradigm in your mind to where it is evil to have that. Ooh. So... This is for people who feel like that's good. All people who have wealth are evil Mm. and you have demonized people for for the wealth that they've acquired in an honest way. Then if God wants to send you that kind of blessing, you have already blocked your blessing because you cannot actually position yourself to receive something that you believe is evil deep down. And so, I mean, Whatever it may be that seems more abundant, that seems more blessed. Yeah. If you, th- the scripture says every good thing comes from above. Yeah. So if you think that every single person who was blessed in crazy ways is somehow evil, um, is somehow crooked, has gotten it in a wrong way, um, is stuck up. If you think every single person is, then if God wanted to bless you, his hands are tied. Mm. If God wanted to bless you. Your mind is bound. You can't receive what you think is evil. Ooh. And so I think that's a big thing because like a lot of people struggle to, to receive because they've demonized so many people for having that very thing. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, man, I, 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 it's, it's a scarcity mentality. It At the end scarcity. of the day, it's a scarcity mentality. Um, and God can use all things for his glory. Yeah. He can use all things for his glory. So, yeah. So good. This was such a good conversation. Yes. I feel so, I just feel like this is going to touch so many people. It's going to be a blessing. It's such a blessing. And I'm just so glad that we were able to talk about this um, and just talk about it from both ends, mm-hmm. you know, and from our both different experiences. So mm-hmm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment below what resonated with you and like and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye. That was so good. I wonder how long that was. <laughs>